first up, we have Super Block Race. This is a super simple dexterity minigame, and it stars our fat boys racing to match the fallen blocks by pressing the X and O face buttons. Using direct control, you can create any mapping from the six-axis controller to the gameplay. The time penalty for the getting a mistake is balanced by the creator, and it's actually hiding a great depth to the gameplay. It was a great way to create a simple piece of uh, gameplay mechanic with just a few physical tools that you'll be familiar if you've ever used Poppet in Little Big Planet One. With the new competitive scoring, each player gets their own score, which can be set by the creator. And at the end of the level, here in two seconds, you get presented with a neat map so that the winner can uh, celebrate the style. So next up, we have Crashy Crash. It's a kind of top-down sports sumo. And in this, in this le level, these guys are just trying to bump each other out of the ring. But what the crane has done here is add X and mapped it to give a boost, which adds an element of strategy. Again, it's a really simple game mechanic that was great fun to create using the physical tools. This level also showcases, for those creators out there, the mover objects, which allow you to attach them to any piece of the world and make it move exactly how you want, ranging from the central spawn point, which moves objects between layers, to any kind of motion that you can imagine. Once again, at the end of the level, you get a neat grid showing who did what to who and who's the ultimate winner. Lastly, I'd like to introduce you to the glorious chaos of multiplayer competitive action in this Rocket Arena level. This is actually the easiest one to build, simply placing objects in the world, setting gravity to low, and using a new character enhancement called the Creatinator. So players out there who've played Little Big Planet will be soaking up all of the new features here, but the Creatinator is a, is a hat which you put on Sackboy and you can set to emit any object from cows to flowers to rockets in this case. I think let's see who's doing the best. Come on, Green, you're on, you're on zero, no point. Keep going. In the background, you see the holographic material. That's been used by many of our creators uh, to create heads-up displays and things like that. In online, if you use a competitive mode, each PS3 gets its own camera, so it would be really easy to make a gigantic scrolling level in Little Big Planet 2. So, to wrap up, I'd just like to show you some of uh, footage of the kind of gameplay that you can expect in Little Big Planet 2. Because when we were creating these tools, really we wondered, what will the breadth be? We'll stay true to the platforming at the heart of Little Big Planet. So what we did was invite some of the top creators down to the Media Molecule offices, and we just gave them 24 hours to run wild with the new tools. We did not give them any tuition or any help. They'd seen nothing. And this is all unedited footage created in one night by some guys ranging from a kind of gallery shooter here. Sackboy is doing way more than just platforming. There were tons of different kinds of levels, and we've carried this breadth all the way through to the story mode in Little Big Planet 2, ranging from top-down racing games with AI characters, and even in one instance, a full real-time strategy game with multiple units, uh, unit creation, pathfinding, psychedelic 3D shooter, which takes place at the end of one of the boss fights in the game. What you just saw was an example of the breadth of the in-game tools, the things that we use at Media Molecule and which our fans and our creators use also, ranging from custom HUDs to all of those features in the RTS. It's super easy and it looks beautiful. With Little Big Planet 2, the breadth and the possibilities are endless. You can make any kind of game you can imagine. It's truly a platform for games. Thank you for your attention.